back with more of the Pope on film. If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast. I mean, it's it's the talk of the town. It's sweeping the nation. It's swiffering the nation. It's rooming the nation. But only real fans, true hardcore fans of our podcast, uh, fans, real fans, the poffies out there who have been with us since the beginning, back when this show started off as a public access show in 1993. Yes. In, in uh, 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 how could I forget, Kent, Ohio, where the podcast started. Back then, our show was a public access show about just two things, slap bracelets and paws. Yes. Yeah. Hell yes. Yeah. Hell yes. You know those slap bracelets, funny? You know those slap bracelets? Yes, I do. Slap them on. Do you know what those were? Uh, they, they tracking were just, devices? Huh? They were just, um, tape, dis- tape, not tape dispensers. What am I thinking about, honey? The, the, the Tape measure. Measure. Yeah, yeah tape, tape measure. measure that they would just <laughs> cut up and cover with fabric. Yeah, yeah. Back then they were very metal. Now you buy one that's probably like plastic. But back in the day, yeah, you would just rip open the, and you would just see like one inch. You would wear, you would wear until the little ends would wear out, and the metal would through. Yes. Start making you look like you were suicidal. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But real hardcore fans of ours, Bunny, would know two things about us, two fundamental and really real facts about both of us. America's hottest will they or won't they couple. The modern day uh, Sam and Sonny and Cher. Yeah. Sonny and Cher. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bunny and Steve. First and foremost, Bunny, the first fact about you is the fact that in your spare time, Bunny, you teach ballet classes. Please tell us more about that. Uh, it's it's very demanding. It's very demanding. Uh, I I uh, have a slightly different technique. It is a, a very uh, like Yugoslavian. It's very Slavic. The technique I use for for ballet. Because uh, the thing is, is when you're learning ballet, which is why you start with children. You know. Um, it actually reforms your body. Your body does not grow in the same way as somebody who does not do ballet, in particularly the feet, you know? So I like to have the first day of class, I like to have all the children line up, and then I go down the line with a sledgehammer and I bust their feet and I put them into molds. Uh... Let me tell you, cry just like little bitches. You, don't, you know, you don't hear a lot about foot. I mean, I mean, where is your devotion to your art? Okay. Yeah. You don't hear, you don't hear a lot of people talking about foot binding in, in this, the year of our Lord, 2022. No. That's good. That's good that you're bringing it back. Old school, very old school. And the second thing that you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So what we like to do in this part of the show is I like to get a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know that well, and reworded by my own unique storytelling panache. And that's yes. what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of Steve's Historic Approximations! Or Shap, as I like to call it, per- repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Personally, I like the name Shap. It sounds like something you hear on Hop. Well, somebody Shap my mama. And then there's like a laugh track. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conway Twitty. Anywho, and it has to be Steve's historical approximations, because what is it going to be? Mae Lynn's historical approximations? Milhap? That sounds horrible. Yeah. No, May Lynn's historical approximation. So, 
Milha. Moha. 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 I think that's a I think that's a name of a, a Cylon from Battlefield Earth. Bringing Cylons back into the mix. Yeah. Today on the old Shappity Shap Shap, we will be talking about the absolutely, positively, 100%, 98% true story of the wooden airfields of World War II, Electric Boogaloo. For a long time, people dismissed the stories of wooden air bases. But recently, this odd bit of history has in fact been verified by numerous historians as... Eh, this is probably true. So, uh, it's WWII as Dick Miller's character in Gremlins called it. It's WWII and the Nazis are bombing the Allies and the Allies are bombing the Nazis. And the Brits are like, man, how can we stop or at least slow down these frickin' bombings, because these douche canoes are flying all over the place, they're destroying all of our airfields, what do we do? And someone had the crazy idea of, uh, what if, and hear me out here, this is gonna sound weird, but hear me out. What if we build fake-ass air bases, just made of wood, also wood, just, just, just we build fake airfields, a fake airbase that looks real from like super far above with the Nazis flying overhead. And, and it, that way the Nazis will bomb those. And those fake bases, and they won't be bombing the real bases. And this actually happened for years and years in World War II. Uh, both sides would be building fake wooden air hangars, fake wooden planes. For years, both sides would end up performing airstrikes, real actual airstrikes with actual bombs on fake wooden airplanes. Isn't that crazy? Yes. It's crazy. So the stories of... Especially, with all the, especially with all the people standing by the fake balsa wood airplanes and they're just like bobbleheads. <laughs> the wacky <laughs> waving inflatable arm playing allies. Play allies. Yes. Yeah, yeah. is what it's they just, what they just have, have there. there. The, the stories of, of uh, fake wooden airfields were, were so, so damn ridiculous that for decades people assumed that these were tall tales from the fox of war or whatever. That this, this was just, oh, this, this, this is just, just people, people are making this up. This didn't actually happen. This, this is probably just imagination or something like that. But there is proof that this actually was a thing. Uh, there are bits and pieces of his history to back this up. For example, there are true diary entries of a foreign war correspondent named William Shire. He published his diary entries from the war as a book uh, that he published in the 1940s called Berlin Diary. And in his diary entry for November 27, 1940, he wrote, and I quote, both sides in this war have built a number of dummy air drones, air, air, air drones and strewn them with wooden airplanes. So there you go. Plus, that book, uh, Berlin... Uh, there was a 2009 book called Wood for Wood about the history behind the wooden airfields, and that was turned into I've a documentary been. called Wood for Wood. I thought that was the Jonas Brothers document, and the Jonas Brothers all the biography, yeah. yeah. No, that's Menudo. It's Menudo that's Menudo? Yeah. 
And I, I actually found the full documentary free on YouTube, but it's all in French. So, okay. But it is, there is a, a French documentary. Wow, that was, that, I did that on purpose to make sure you were all awake. And you all passed. So you all get a gold star for listening to this podcast. I dropped the mic for those of you just listening and not it, watching on Twitch, but you should be watching on Twitch. Is that, that mic even happening. working? Because that should have been a lot louder, I would think. Uh, I, is it? I don't know. Tap it. Give me, uh, tap, tap, tap. Hold on. Let, hold on. Let me, let me listen. This is not that loud. Hold on a second. I'm going to switch. Okay. Let me. Okay, so I just switched microphones. Okay. It, it, testing. 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 I'm waiting for the, the screen to catch up to the dialogue. Hold on a second. Yeah, you're very muted now. Yeah. I just, okay, now, yeah, now it's like horrible. Okay, so we're going to switch again. Microphone over. Okay, so I've switched to a third microphone. I'm not sure which, because Zoom being Zoom, and also this is my wife's computer, there's like four different microphone choices, so I'm trying them all out right here on chat. Until we get one that works, I want people to hear this. This is a good chat! Yes. Okay. Okay, that one doesn't sound like great either. Uh... Uh, come on. Ah, what did I do? Let's, let's try this one for a little while. It sounds as good as the first one. The middle one sucks. Okay, so I've, 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 I've gone back to the first one, and I, I want to see how it sounds. Does this sound good? Does this sound okay? This sounds good, but when you get more... Like once you're getting into doing what you're doing, and you're moving around a bit, as you as you move back, the sound drops off hugely. Okay, so I will stay right here and podcast like this, like I am a <laughs> professional podcaster. Then you're gonna have to get a fedora. Okay, gotcha. All right, so wooden air bases. Okay. So, in the book, in the movie documentary that they made, they do interview numerous veterans who were there and who saw the wooden air bases and who helped build the wooden air bases. So this isn't like a hypocritical thing. It's real. It's a fact. Yes, Eleanor? Sure. One spray and that's it, okay? Okay, so that brings us to the main story. It is a meme that has been going around in the history buff corners of social media over the past couple of months, and it's a true story. It's World War II. It's 1944, and the Nazis have occupied Holland. Okay? Okay. And they know that the Allies will be coming soon and bombing them, so the Germans, they decide to build a fake airfield, and they get to work, all of their Nazi soldiers, and they're building, uh, speaking of Nazi soldiers, Star Wars fans are pissing me the hell off. This is an unplanned aside, but I'm so sick okay. of, of uh, there's a new bad guy in the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show, and she's like, I don't know, the Grand Inquisitor or something? I don't know. But she's a black woman, and of course, oh, they put a black woman as the bad guy in Star Wars because Star Wars is war. Star Wars is owned by Disney. I'm so sick of these liberals trying to make everything about politics, and it's like, fuck off. So now this poor black actress is getting death threats from Star Wars fans. Fuck all of these people. Yeah. And, and it just pisses me off because these Star Wars fans are like, why can't I watch my... Why can't I watch my... Uh, magical Jedi space show where 
leftist rebels are fighting against an evil far-right dictatorship, a, a dictator and his Nazi-era stormtroopers without it getting political. <laughs> ridiculous, but okay, whatever. You're getting the wrong messages from these films. Uh, okay, so the Nazis have occupied home. I think I said that. And they know that the Allies are going to come and they're going to bomb them, so they start building a fake airfield and, and fake vehicles, wooden tanks, wooden jeeps, wooden air hangers, wooden fuel tanks, wooden everything. And they're working hard making a giant life-size fake air base. And it took so long to build this massive wooden air base that the Allies are just there with, uh, I don't know, uh, goggles with, uh, you know, just watching. And they're like, uh, oh, yeah, they're building a fake air base. They're building, yeah, we, we've had plenty of time to do reconnaissance. Yeah, the Nazis, they're, they're building a fake airfield. You know what? You know what? We'll let them finish. <laughs> yeah. So, so what do the Brits do? They attack with passive aggressiveness. I think it's a very British move. What they end up, what they ended up doing, it's very British. We're gonna attack them in a polite British way. So the Allies wait for the Nazis to be done building the fake airbase. And so finally, when Germans finally finish the fake airfield, one single Royal Air Force ship takes off, lies across the English Channel, flies to the wooden airbase, and drops one single wooden bomb on the fake wooden air base with the words wood for wood written on the side and to this day that single wooden bomb is proudly being displayed at the airborne museum in france nice where it is still there and uh, people like saying that these stories people have said for many years that these stories are fake but it it's true they're here it's a fact and the public ought to know about it Yes. Last night I saw a flying How would Ed Woodfield know that finally the U.S. government is like, yeah, okay, there's shit out there we don't fucking know about. Like, that's fascinating. Man, people should take a, a, a new look at Plan 9 from outer space. Yes. Now that uh, aliens have all but been confirmed by the United States government, <laughs> if anything, Ed Wood should be vindicated. Plan 9 was ahead of its time. As opposed to doing anything else. <laughs> I, 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 mentioned, I mentioned on a, a Twitter like a night or two ago, I just posted some articles about me, and I, I, I said, friendly reminder that in very, 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 very small circles, I'm almost a big deal. Yes. As the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, I'm in Ed Wood's Wikipedia page. Okay. Let's, be, let's be really honest. This right here is about the extent of the circle. <laughs> and one time a uh, writer for the Huffington Post writing about the Church of Ed Wood I, 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 I'm, I'm just the, the world's smallest big deal and uh, someone who I went to high school said and the Church of Ed Wood was the moment I realized that you were trans and it's like oh wow okay so you knew I was trans in 97. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Anything, this is your fault now. Thanks. <laughs> I realized that I was a trans woman when my daughter Amber finally just asked me, hey, when you dress up, do you feel like you are a man dressing in women's clothes or do you feel like you are actually a woman? And that's when 
a light bulb went off in my head and I finally saw a million clues throughout my entire life of all of the, the hints that I was actually a woman this entire time. So if anything, me waiting until my 40s to be to come out as a trans woman is kind of Amber's fault. Okay. Because why didn't Amber ask me that question way before that? In 1997. Yeah, in 1997. Anyway, that is it for Steve's historical approximation this week. Next week, we will be discussing a shocking story about a cast member from Sesame Street. And we will also be talking about how uh, oftentimes kids will uh, tell rumors and tall tales, but sometimes they're kind of true. Yes. We're going to be delving into the shocking seedy underbelly of Sesame Street next week in a chef that I am very excited about. I'm saying next week. We're doing the podcast every other week, but I'm still going to keep saying it. Okay. It just feels right. So join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's Historic Approximations. And cut on that. <laughs>